Coach, the uh, offensive line has been through a lot this season. Obviously, the coaching change. Um, just for them to have a game like they did against Michigan State, I guess, wh what's been the most rewarding part of, of just seeing them, I guess, kind of have to deal with the, with the challenges but then able to have a game like that? I mean, I've, just the payoff for those guys. You know, those guys have been through a lot. You know, they've hurt a lot. Um, they put a lot of pressure on themselves. They have a lot of pride. They have a lot of pride in performance. And, um, you know, we've got a new quarterback. Um, you know, you're playing in big wind, really cold. Um, you know, we've got some injuries at wide out. And so um, for those guys to really kind of own the game, you know, and put the game on their shoulders and know that we had to run the ball successfully to win a game. And, um, and they did a great job. You know, and if we hadn't stepped into one or two sacks and, and cost us, you know, it could have been a 300 yard rushing day. And so, um, you know, and, and the good news is there, there's still more to be had. You know, there's still, you know, some things where, you know, it could have been a 320, 330, 340 on the ground type of day. But just really proud of those guys. You know, and without those guys, we, we don't we don't win that football game. Coach, <clears throat> on Saturday, you just talked about the running game was uh, the. Uh, just of the offense. So how did you have uh, the onions to call the passes at the end of the game for the, the play that set up the touchdown and then the two point conversion? Well, I think on the, you know, you get in that situation over time, you know, they went first, we blocked a kick, you know, we ran the ball really well to put ourselves in a position, you know, you know, Charles is so good that you just know, hey, look, we, we get this thing kind of center yeah, you know, we just get it down there. He's going to go win the game. And, and we got a field goal blocked. And, you know, from there, really, the attitude, let's just go win the game right now. You know, and so, uh, you know, we've been kind of setting that up all day. You know, big, heavy 12 personnel look where we had been almost 100% run. And, and um, you know, we just we wanted to go get that one in right now. Go try to win the game right now. You know, and so uh, we're able to punch it in, you know, with a big power there, you know, from the one, you know, and then the two point play, you know, that, that, that's a menu of things that we've carried all year. We've practiced it. We've wrapped it a bunch of times and uh, Dex did a great job finding the tight end late. Uh, way back in your introductory press conference, you said part of your job as offensive coordinator is to mac maximize the talents at quarterback. Obviously, you've had to do that for a <coughs> few different quarterbacks here with Basilak, Tuttle, and now with Williams. What has Williams brought? Like, what are his strengths that you try to show? Like, some stuff that shows up in practice. Now we've seen it on the field at Michigan State, Ohio State. Yeah, I think first and foremost is just the the physical arm talent. You know, he can really drive the ball down the field. You know, he's got a big, 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 strong arm. You know, he's a really good reactionary thrower. Um, you know, kind of what he does really well. You know, the, the elements were kind of precluded to that. Um, you know, and then I think obviously the, the conflict that he can create in the C-gap, you know, with his legs. You know, and he's a guy that can win on third mediums, you know, scramble attempts and when things don't go your way and just, you know, just the athleticism that he has. I, I, he plays the game really tough. You know, there's some times he probably needs to do a better job of taking care of himself. But, um, you know, I think just ultimately his versatility, you know, and he's a guy that can do a little bit of everything and he's still learning. You know, it's a guy that missed a lot of football with an injury, um, you know, and so he's still a really young player. And as he continues to grow, you know, and, and through next spring, he's got a chance to be a really good player for us. Oh, well, Tom mentioned Jalen Lucas a couple times a few minutes ago. Just what have you, how have you seen him develop, and what do you, what have you seen as his biggest area of growth so far as a freshman? Yeah, I think you know the the, the pass protection piece. That's always the biggest deal, you know. And and um, you know we, we <laughs> we've he's had a couple issues um, that kind of showed themselves, not necessarily in terms of identification. You know, I mean he knows exactly what to do. You know, and now it's just how to do it. You know, and so, but I think just. From now, you know, from the time we got him in the spring until now, you know, he, he's grown exponentially in pass protection, um, learned to really settle in and kind of run the ball from B gap to B gap, you know, and then obviously anytime we can get him the ball on the perimeter, that's going to be huge because we've all seen what he can do in green grass. I guess it's, it's simplistic, but how much does he open up for that run game, especially kind of the lateral run game when yeah. that backside of the defensive line has to stay home because it's him and not somebody maybe less mobile. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and, and uh, you know, any, there's two things. Number one, just, you know, any C-gap conflict that you can create makes people play more disciplined, um, makes people stay home, you know, kind of creates an even hat number. And then, you know, a few times in Michigan State, you're actually able to get plus one, you know, like the, the, the big counter that Sean scored on. 
you know, they're so worried about his ability to pull the ball, you know, late rotation from a boundary safety. We're actually able to get the second puller to the safety. And a lot of that has to do with they got to make sure that they stay home on the backside, you know. And so, um, you know, allows you to get sometimes not only just even numbers, but plus one, which, you know, is, is where you want to live in a run game. Coach, Coach, uh, I know a lot of Saturday was the weather, but I'm just curious, kind of over the last couple of weeks, transitioning quarterbacks, like for you and your staff, how hard is it behind the scenes to game plan from a what was like a, t a offense that was almost leading the country in passing attempts to now a very run oriented offense? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, the biggest thing is just as long as you possess a system that allows you to kind of mix and match, you know, and, and I think, you know, the tree of coaches that I've been around have always done a really nice job of, you know, whether it's a guy that you want to throw the ball 50, 60 times with, whether it's a guy that you want to throw it 30 times. I mean, just when you've got a system and you've got the tools within the system to kind of get to what you need to, I, I think that says more about the system itself, you know. And so, um, but our staff has done a tremendous job. You know, Coach Johnson, Coach Henry, um, Coach Carey now, who's, who's doing an excellent job, you know, kind of filling in for us, the offensive line coach. But yeah, Coach Wright, you know, like our tight ends have had to step up in a huge way, you know, and a lot of that doesn't show up in the stat book, you know. But from a pass protection standpoint, like our tight ends have had to become a huge part of that. From a run game standpoint, our tight ends have had to become a huge part of that. And so, and to their detriment in the stat column. You know, and that's hard and it's hard to accept, but just, you know, our, everybody's done a really nice job. And so uh, I've got a great staff. I'm really fortunate as a coordinator to have a lot of really good people, more than just good coaches. And, and so we work together every week, try to put together and give ourselves a chance. Walt, uh, you've seen a lot of this offensive line on film all year long now, and obviously that was probably their best game. Yeah. Uh, when you look at the specifics, though, of what you see on film, like what – kind of more specifically was different that they did so much better this week compared to last week and if there were any individual players or things that kind of stood out for you with that I think uh, from a technique and fundamental standpoint you know we've done everything we can to limit the pictures that those guys are going to see to simplify as much as humanly possible when I say limit the pictures I mean trying to create as consistent as a box as you can regardless of what's going on around it, whatever formation we have to get into to set the box in a certain way or to set the front in a certain way. So within the practice that they can block those same techniques, those, you know, within the same, fun, you know, as many times as humanly possible throughout the week. And I, I think like the young guys, like Khalil Benson, like Josh Sales, um, Carter Smith and Bray Lynch, both who played as true freshmen against Ohio State and last week. Um, I think just really trying to limit the things that we're going to ask them to do on a daily basis have really allowed them to kind of improve over the last couple weeks. And, uh, you know, we're just really proud of those guys. Really, last week was kind of the first time that where we vertically dented the line of scrimmage. And I think that's the thing that I'm, that I'm most proud of because that's taken a lot of work, not only from Coach Carey, but from those kids, you know, and, and how hard they've practiced. You know, they've done everything that we've asked them to do. And, and now, you know, everything takes time, but you're starting to see a little bit of the payoff. All right, thank you guys. Have a wonderful day.